Hi, I'm Dr. Hay. I'd like to tell you about how the Northern Lights are created, or the physics behind the Aurora Borealis. So first we have to understand that the Earth itself has a magnetic field. That magnetic field is generated by the liquid iron core that's swirling around in the center of the Earth. It's like a large bar magnet. It's a little more complex than that, but let's think of it as a big bar magnet. You have magnetic field lines going all the way around uh, the top and the bottom of the Earth. And they curl way out far away from the Earth, and then they go into the Earth at the top of the bar magnet and out of the Earth at the bottom of the bar magnet. So there's places along the Earth where the atmosphere and that magnetic field intersect. Now, the sun can put off charged particles, electrically charged particles, and that's in the form of solar wind. So think of the sun as really far away and really much larger than the Earth. It's putting off large wind of solar charged particles. And those par charged particles are coming towards the Earth. The Earth's magnetic field actually is a protective boundary, and I'll explain why that happens with the physics behind this electromagnetic force. So this is called the Lorentz force. The Lorentz force tells you that the motion of a particle with charge Q and velocity V is affected by a magnetic field V perpendicularly. And so here's what we do. We say that our charge particle is traveling this way with our index finger. You can see the cross product in, uh, cross product in several different ways, but here's one way to look at it. We're going to create an orthogonal coordinate system with our right hand index, middle, and thumb, where each one of these is perpendicular to the other two. All right, so this is going to be our index finger. The middle finger is going to be magnetic field V, which you can see I've drawn here as a magnetic field coming out at you and away from me. The charged particle travels this way. This is the velocity. The magnetic field is the middle finger. It goes towards you, and you can see that the force on that particle is perpendicular to these two and is actually downwards. So here's what happens in that first instant when a charged particle meets a magnetic field. It's going to experience a force that pushes it slightly downward. And now the same force is continuing to act. So we have QV cross V gets you a force that's downward. Now that force is slightly in this direction. Originally it was like this. This is going to cause the particle to move in a circle because the force will be continually perpendicular to the velocity of the particle and the magnetic field V. So you have particles that are not changed in speed by the magnetic field, but they're actually changed in direction. So this charged particle goes QV cross V gets you a force and it continues around this direction until the particle leaves that magnetic field. So this means that those charged particles from the sun can be trapped by the magnetic fields. But they're not trapped in the way that you might think. This is actually what's happening. So let's say we've got a charged particle traveling like this from the sun, and it comes into the magnetic field of the Earth, which of course curls all the way around this way. But at some point, it will intersect with one of these lines. So it's going to be affected in the direction rather than its speed and it will spiral around these magnetic field lines and basically be trapped by the magnetic field until it strikes the atmosphere on Earth. So now we have a charged particle trapped by the Earth's magnetic field. It's traveling toward one of the poles if it strikes an oxygen particle in that atmosphere, then it's going to let off the color of green or something like green in our um, visible spectrum. And that's because an electron is excited in an atom by this interaction. It will go up to a higher orbital level. And then when it drops down to a specific uh, orbital, it will let off one of the visible colors of green. If on the other hand, it hits a atom like a nitrogen atom, um, and that's more like a pink or a purple color. Now I want to show you what we saw on Friday, May 10th, 2024. My family took some images of this. It was really spectacular. We got to see the Northern Lights, a really special um, experience. The images that we took, first I'll show you one that I took. And that image was 
pretty much what I felt like I could see with my naked eye. If, on the other hand, you take some images with a, a more modern phone, you can get, or with an even better camera, you can get better images that will absorb more light. If they're taking long exposure images, so they're absorbing more light. And so you can see those colors a little bit stronger. You can definitely see the green color and the pink color. And so it's because of the Lorentz force and the special relationship between electricity and magnetism, and it's because of the magnetic field of the Earth and the charged particles coming from the sun that you see the northern lights. Thank you. Magenta, there's no magenta in the wave. <laughs>